Obi-Wan Kenobi. We've hit the finale episode, the end of the season, the end of the show, potentially. And honestly, I wasn't expecting much for this final episode. I didn't think it would be a great finale, and I didn't even think it would be the best episode in the series. After watching it, I'm unsure if it's the best in the show. Every single episode has just kind of been mediocre in its own way. Each episode has had little glimpses of good things in its own way, but overall, the show as a whole has been mediocre, and so has each and every episode. And in my eyes, it's a bit of a disappointment because... It just didn't spend its time wisely. The episode itself had a couple of good scenes to be fair, such as when Obi-Wan cut Vader's helmet. That conversation was cool. Seeing Anakin's head, you know, seeing that that's Hayden in there. And also the voice switching between Anakin and Vader, that's something we've never really heard before. You hear Anakin's voice even when he's got the mask on, which I thought was really cool. I did actually enjoy that scene. I enjoyed Obi-Wan's reaction to it, you know, obviously he's tearing up. And, you know, he says, you know, my friend is truly dead. I thought that was a very cool scene, although it didn't make sense to me that if he said that Anakin is truly dead, that he walked away from the monster that is Darth Vader. Surely he should end it then and there when he had the chance, but regardless, cool scene. We needed more scenes like that between Obi-Wan and Vader. I know it's one of those things where it's like, well, how many times do you want him to meet between, you know, episode three and four? Like, how much is going to go on between them? But... I just think more of that would have been good and maybe more Obi-Wan Anakin flashbacks to explore that sort of thing and you know explore visions that they both had after the events of Revenge of the Sith I don't know I think that sort of thing would have been nice I also thought the scene between Obi-Wan and Leia like right at the end when he returns her to Alderaan or when he visits Alderaan after she's been returned I thought that was quite a nice scene but again it's a scene that should have happened in like episode two <laughs> You know, it was just a, a plot line that was drawn out way too long for me. Reva was a weird one in this episode. It didn't make the most sense to me because I couldn't really understand why she was going after Luke. Was it to benefit the Empire or to go against the Empire? Like, I can see both arguments. Like, it would benefit the Empire because, you know, they're killing what could be a potential Jedi and someone that Obi-Wan is protecting, but it could be against the Empire because they're killing someone that obviously they see they could turn to the Sith as it is Vader's offspring. You know, it's just, it, it's a weird one. I didn't really understand her motivation was going after him and then she just, you know, obviously had the visions and it was very on the nose. It was like, we, we know why she didn't kill him, but then, then they had to show the flashbacks again. It's like they didn't trust the viewer to realize what was going on in her head. Like they didn't, they didn't think we were smart enough to realize that and it's sometimes it's just a little bit yes we get it like we've, we've seen the other episodes we've seen all the other movies like we, we understand the reference we understand why characters are making certain decisions we don't need like a flashback or whatever to emphasize it i don't know it's a it's a little nitpick but i just think it's one of them it's like sometimes things in this show were too on the nose i also wasn't really a fan of the inclusion of young luke i don't really I just don't think it was necessary. Same way I think that it wasn't really necessary to include young Leia. I just think there's no need to pull in all these original trilogy characters. I just think you run the risk of potentially tarnishing either the characters or the movies that they were originally in because you're you're adding things that maybe shouldn't be added. Like the fact that now apparently Luke Skywalker is nearly killed by an Inquisitor at age 10. In A New Hope, he seems like a kid, well, you know, even though he's 19, but he seems like a kid that's just never experienced anything. Like, he's just been sheltered from it all. He just knows about things. And now you're telling me that a Sith nearly executed him when he was 10 years old. And you're telling me that's not going to change his character in any way. He's not going to ask questions. He's not going to ask who the Inquisitor was. He's not going to ask why were the Inquisitors after him. Do you know what I mean? I just I just think it was a, a silly thing to do. It made no sense for Reva for start starters, you know, in my opinion. I can't really see why she went after him. And then it just doesn't it doesn't help Luke's character in a new hope. It's getting to the stage now where I just want to blank out anything that isn't the original six movies. Because anything in between just potentially fucking messes stuff up. Clone Wars is like the exception. It's like I've said before, I think Disney should just stay away from anything between episode one and episode six because they just ru risk ruining stuff in there or just making characters like not who they were, like Boba Fett, for instance. I just think they should, they should stay clear and just create their own stories. If they're so fucking capable, why, why not make your own stories? Why are you milking 
all these great characters that George Lucas created. At least with The Mandalorian, it was far enough detached for it to be an enjoyable watch without the worry of what it's gonna fuck up, even though it did include Boba Fett. Obviously, I just mentioned that I don't like what Disney did with Boba Fett in the Boba Fett show, but I like their minimal inclusion for him in The Mandalorian. I thought that was kind of short and sweet and it didn't like affect his character that much. It just made him seem even more badass than we already knew he was. I do wonder what George Lucas would make of the inclusion of, you know, Leia and Luke in this show and the things that happened to them. And I just wonder what he'd make of the show in general. I would be curious. I don't think he'd be best pleased, putting it lightly. If I had to pin down what the main issues with this show were, I would say that there was not enough time spent with Obi-Wan Vader and the Grand Inquisitor, who were the three best characters in the show. There was too much time spent with characters that weren't of much interest, such as Leia and Tala. There was a tone as well that didn't fit what this show should have been, and the plot was just drawn out and it just only contained a few notable moments where the rest just felt like filler. I just don't think the build-up was handled very well here. I don't think it built tension well. I don't think it built up to things well. It was just like, here's a kind of mediocre plot just, you know, swimming along. Oh, let's throw in a cool thing. It was just stuff like that. Like, it didn't feel like anything built up to anything. Like, everyone was surprised when Vader fought Obi-Wan in, in episode 3 of the show. It just, it was like, it seemed a bit too soon. It didn't really seem like there was enough build-up. Like, when he just entered the village, it's like, oh, okay, he's, he's here. Okay, cool. But also, like, where's the build-up? Where's the... Where's the rise to that to that tense moment? It just didn't feel like it was like something that was long awaited. It was just just felt like they were throwing it in at any point. I'm assuming the creators thought that if they put enough cool little scenes and lines in the show, it would make up for the rest. Like Obi-Wan saying hello there at the end to Luke or Vader talking to Palpatine. I mean, it was cool, but it just it doesn't make up for the rest of the show that was like 80% just boring in my opinion. I had high hopes for this show like a lot of people did. I know it sounds like I'm scathing the show, like I'm calling it shit. I don't think it's shit. I just think it's very mediocre. I just think they had all these great characters already set up from like one thing or another in the past, whether it be a past movie or TV show, and then they somehow didn't build on that and make them more interesting. They just made a very mediocre show that didn't add anything to the Star Wars universe. In, in my opinion i just <clears throat> i just don't think it brought much and obi-wan a character i love vader a, ca a character i love it just it didn't it didn't take them to new levels which i thought it would i just don't think it feels like star wars and as i said a few episodes back it feels like it was made by someone who wasn't a big star wars fan but then they were told by like another person like oh it, this is how you please Star Wars fans. You include this and this and this. And then they did that. It, that's what it felt like to me. It didn't feel like there was a real passion to, to really explore these two key characters in Star Wars. I would give today's episode a 6.5 out of 10. I would give the series as a whole a 6.5 out of 10. And on the rewatchability... Oh my god. I'm really strong to say that. On the rewatchability rating... I would not watch this again because it just doesn't feel like it added much to the Star Wars universe. And for me personally, I'm, I'm such a big lover of Star Wars. You know, I have been since I was a kid. So if I watch something in Star Wars that I think just isn't that good or is very mediocre and doesn't really serve a purpose to watch again, I'm not going to watch it again. I will not. I will not watch it. I will always skip it. You know, I watched the original six movies. I don't watch any of the sequels. <laughs> You know, I, I rewatch certain shows. I won't rewatch other shows, and this is one of them. I just don't think it it added anything to Star Wars, and it's not something I hold dear to my heart. Honestly, I think Star Wars may just be a done deal now. I said it before. I just I think it's going down that MCU route where they're just going to milk the crap out of it until it's just a, you know a, a very thin corpse lying on the ground. I think it's it could be the end potentially. Um, I still have hope in The Mandalorian though. If that show goes tits up, then we really are buggered. Um, I think that's that's all we kind of, for me at least, that's all I've got any faith in. It's the only thing that Disney have made that's really stood out, I think. So we just got to hope that, that that continues to be good. But if they butcher that, it's over. Either way, I've been Joe Squared. Uh, be interested to hear what you thought about this show, what you think about the future of Star Wars. Do feel free to let me know. But for now, that's been Obi-Wan. I will see you in whatever next thing 
Star Wars are pumping out. I think it's that Andor show. We'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.